our planet Earth, a deep blue sphere slowly rotating in space. Seen from a distance, the vast expanses of the Karoo seem like a tiny little speck on this globe. This little film will explain why the Karoo is such a unique place on Earth. The processes that shaped today's Karoo in all its beauty and its mysteries, and why fracking it for shale gas is perhaps not the best idea. Join us for a ride through time and space to go to places no one has ever been. Let us start our journey by diving deeper and deeper into the Earth. The Karoo, nothing but little crinkles of the Earth's crust, float with the African continent on the liquid, extremely hot molten magma of the Earth's mantle. Slowly they drift along, powered by the eternal heat engine of the Earth's core. This heat engine creates powerful currents in the Earth's mantle, which drags the continents with it. This is a slow process, but it can reach the speed of the growth of our fingernails, up to 10 centimeters per year. Thus, over millions of years, continents can move thousands of kilometers. In this process, the continents crumble, fracture, and bump into each other, creating huge mountain chains in this collision. This is how the so-called Cape Fold Belt was created. This South African mountain range extends from Cape Town up to East London. The ancient continental margin has seen many episodes of uplifting and folding over millions of years. Initially, the Cape Fold Belt was as high as the Himalaya and sent its rivers into the wide Karoo Basin. But as it was formed, it was quickly eroded. A much wetter climate created large rivers several times stronger than today's rivers. The violent rivers carried millions of tons of rocks, sand and mud with them into the Karoo Basin. With the massive mud flows, a lot of organic matter, plant material and animal bodies was swept into the plains of the Karoo Basin. The resulting pockets of organic matter were quickly covered by the next mud flow and thus tightly sealed before they could decompose. Usually, organic matter from plants and animals would be eaten by other animals and digested by bacteria. But in this case, they were safely tucked away for millions of years, buried deep in the sediments. These poor creatures would then be digested under the influence of heat and pressure, and eventually, after very long periods, into the main components of coal, oil and gas, the basis of energy production. In the center of the Karoo Basin, conditions were ripe for this digestion into gas, which is found in tiny pockets of the rock. It is also found in the cracks and joints of the rocks, and being so light, tends to migrate upwards even into other rock formations. This is the shale gas of the Karoo the industry wants to exploit. It is so tightly bound to the shales that it requires massive fracking to liberate the gas. So the theory goes. But something happened some 140 million years ago that could well change this picture completely. Back to our beautiful Earth. From a distance, we can see how the continents move along, driven by the internal heat engine, the magma of the Earth. Continents move along, some slower, some faster. As they drift along, they are under immense stress. They crack not only at their margins, but also in many other fracture zones. Along these deep cracks in the African continent, magma rose up to feed a chain of volcanoes in the Karoo Basin. Their basaltic lava covered wide areas of the basin and piled up several hundred meters high. The last remains of this large magmatic province can still be seen in the highlands of Lesotho, 
we can see such volcanoes erupting today in Iceland. These volcanoes form long chains along the cracks in the continents and pour out vast amounts of basaltic lava. Again, rains and rivers wear down the mountains over millions of years. The higher mountains even carried glaciers that slowly but surely carved out deep valleys. After another 140 million years, little is left of these once mighty mountain chains. Wherever the erosion met the more durable dolerite, the process slowed down. Thus, most mountains in the Karoo are protected by a cap of dolerite rocks. Today, we see just the remnants of these once large volcanoes. It is a special sensation to be able to walk over the surface of the Karoo, where we are actually exploring the basement level of a big volcanic province. In the Karoo today, we have the opportunity to walk in the basement of these volcanoes. Over millions of years, erosion has eaten away most of the volcanoes and stripped them down to their very roots. Today we see this as so-called dolerite intrusions. They are the magmatic feeder channels of the ancient volcanoes that cooled to form dolerite rock. As they are much harder than the shales and sandstones of the Karoo, they stand out and often cap the mountain ranges. The dolerites intruded the surroundings under immense pressure and high temperatures, deriving their energy right from magma chambers under the continents. But sometimes, even this high pressure was not enough to break through the many thousand meters of rock formations above. Then dolerites intruded sideways into weaker rock formations, creating a network of so-called sills. These violent intrusions came in contact with water and methane gas in the Karoo sediments. This resulted in millions of smaller and bigger explosions, seriously fracking the surrounding rocks and creating a wide network of cracks and fissures all along the dolerite intrusions. This process released much of the dangerous methane gas accumulated in the rock formations over millions of years. Scientists assume that much of the shale gas was thus vented into the atmosphere and helped to create a climate crisis in the Jurassic era some 140 million years ago. It is now well known that these fissures and fractures along the cooled dolerite dikes become preferential pathways for groundwater. Every farmer in the Karoo knows that to find water, one must drill boreholes close to the dolerite dikes. They act both as barriers and conduits for groundwater. The industry wants to assure us that there are thousands of meters of impermeable shale layers between the fracked rocks and the Karoo groundwater resources. That may be true, but it is also true that the dolerites are deep structures that could easily convey pollution from deep layers up to the surface. In fact, there are many indicators that this process is already happening in many places naturally. Hot, salty and mineral-rich springs originate deep in the underground and bring deep groundwater to the surface. The same will be true with toxic pollutants that will be brought to the surface along the dolerite dikes. What goes down must come up again. If toxic frac fluids get into the upward current, it will be the end of agriculture and human settlements as we know them. The consequences are too serious to take the risk. <laughs>